This was never going to be a normal bio-lectio, there was simply too much at stake, much of which had nothing to do with the poor old voters of Belog. Still, few could have predicted how bitter or broad the political proxy war being fought on their suburban streets over the past weeks would become. When John Alexander executed a dignified fall on his sword on November the 11th over questions about his citizenship, the opposition smelled blood. Most of the other victims of the Section 44 prohibition on dual citizens holding seats in federal parliament had been members of the Senate. But J.A. was in the lower house and if Labour could take the seat it could break the government's tiny majority. Labour and the crossbench could begin referring coalition MPs off to the High Court over citizenship questions at will. For Bill Shorten's Labour it would be a staggering political victory. Similarly, such a loss would not only be crippling for the coalition, but a personal catastrophe for Malcolm Turnbull. All year his leadership had been harried by the bitter right of his own party, but since the success of the same-sex marriage vote and the rapid carriage of laws accompanying the result, he looked set to end the year on a rare political high. A loss would see him dumped back in the trenches, fending off questions about his leadership. For Labour's candidate, Kristen Akilit, there was a chance at redemption. As New South Wales Premier Keeler had led her state Labour Party to a dismal defeat in 2011, losing 28 seats in a 16.4% swing. To be fair, she had been handed the premiership during that period in Australian politics when the blokes tended to hog the ball until the game was lost, then pass it to the nearest woman standing a few seconds before the whistle blew. But still, the loss must have hurt and, in the years since, she had rehabilitated herself as an insightful political commentator and columnist. And then there is the Chinese question. In September last year one of Labour's rising stars, Senator Sam Dasjerai, had been stripped of his shadow frock back responsibilities when it was revealed that he had solicited donations from businessmen with links to the Chinese government, only to echo Chinese government views in contradiction to his own party's foreign policy positions. Das Jerai was well on the way to re-establishing himself as a political force when the scandal blew up again in the midst of the Bialexio. On November the 29th, a recording was published of Das Jerai speaking alongside one of those businessmen, Huang Tsai Agmo, in June 2016. In it he can be heard declaring that Chinese integrity of its borders is a matter for China, again in contradiction of Labour's position on territorial disputes in the South China Sea. It was also revealed he had tried to convince his colleague Tanya Plibersik from meeting a Chinese dissident during a visit to Hong Kong. The government pounced introducing laws to curtail undue foreign influence in Australia and describing Das Jerai as nothing short of a Chinese double agent. The issue has particular resonance in the seat of Belog, which has the highest proportion of Chinese-Australian voters in the country.